So maybe you're thinking about getting a Can-Am Spider or other similar type vehicle. Or perhaps you already have one. And perhaps you're thinking about doing a long duration trip on one of these vehicles. And why wouldn't you? And that's what we're going to talk about today. In this video, we're going to cover all you need to know about that subject. At least from our perspective. Our planning, our preparation, and our execution for a multi-night road trip adventure. So why even consider traveling on a Can-Am Spider, similar type vehicle, motorcycle, or any other open cockpit vehicle as opposed to any other mode of transportation? Well, that decision is purely personal. But for us, we have found that when you ride on, for us, the Spider, we are no longer just going through the environment that we're traveling through. We're actually part of the environment. What do I mean by that? When you're in a car or a similar vehicle, your, your view is framed by the windshield and the side windows. Uh, you're in a climate controlled vehicle, air conditioning, you, you have an enhanced level of safety that you don't have on the spider or motorcycle or some other type of vehicle like that. Uh, there are no airbags, there are no uh, steel bars to protect you in the event of impact. But the, the trade-off is the enhancement. When I did uh, the ride a few weeks ago up into the uh, Skyline Drive after a rain in the spring, and you could actually smell the forest, um, that was worth it. Plus, your un your view is unencumbered. You're you're not traveling through the environment. You become part of the environment, and for us, that's a, a, a big one. And as a society, I think we've sort of become soft. And what do I mean by that? Well, until about 110 years ago, if you wanted to travel anywhere, you did so on foot, on the back of an animal, or in a carriage or cart that was typically open to the elements. Um, we, didn't, we didn't have the luxury of the transportation systems that we have in place today. So if you needed to go somewhere and it rained, you got wet. If it was cold, you were cold. If it was hot, you are hot. And I think that uh, brings a certain level of exhilaration to travel that we really enjoy. Now, I am far from an expert when it comes to travel, but what we refer to as our particular brand of adventure travel with the Spider is a natural evolution from where I started out. I started flying airplanes at a very, very young age. I've owned a couple of airplanes, and it was not uncommon for me to land at a small remote airport, throw a sleeping bag up under the uh, uh, under the wing or pitch a tent out in front of the airplane. Done that quite a few nights uh, and really had a good time. I've backpacked along the Appalachian Trail. I've camped in remote areas. I've car camped. And yes, I've even traveled in a car and stayed at a hotel. So what type of traveling have we done with our k Spider since we've had it? First of all, I'm going to preface this by saying we didn't just decide on a whim to go out and spend the money to buy a Can-Am Spider. It took two years, 10 months of methodical research and planning to ensure we had our pennies lined up properly so it would integrate into our overall master budget for the rest of our lives. I think people in our age group need to think about that before you drop down some serious coin on a Can-Am Spider or any other toy. And let's face it, this is really a toy, but we love it. So what type of travel experiences have we had on our Spider? Well, the first one was actually a test run on a rental Spider. Sadly, very few places now rent the Spider, so they're hard to come by. At the time of this filming, there is a place in the Smoky Mountain area of North Carolina and Tennessee. They have two outlets, 
and they do rent the Can-Am Spiders. And there is also a uh, dealership, a franchise dealership called Eagle Rider up in New Jersey that still rents the Can-Am Spider. Those are the only ones that I can find so far as of the date of this taping. We rented the Spider and took it on a four day test run up to the Skyline Drive. It was in July, we knew that the mountains would be cooler and it was hot down in the valley. Uh, but we enjoyed riding up on the Skyline Drive and test riding our 2013 rental spider. So much so that we actually decided then to go ahead and make the decision to purchase the spider. How's it Noah? How's it Noah smiling? Yes, I'm having fun. Well, your time on the spider is done for this trip. What do you think? <laughs> Medicinal purposes. For medicinal purposes. Well. In May of 2017, we brought her home and we've enjoyed it ever since. Where have we gone with it since then? Well, our first big trip was to uh, Madison, Alabama to visit some friends. That was a 10 day trip. In 2019, I went out to New Mexico and Utah on what I refer to as the 2019 Asphalt Odyssey. I'll put a link in the video series below uh, or up above here for that. 28 days, 4,500 miles. It was an absolute hoot. We went out to Maggie Valley, North Carolina for a spider rally. Multiple three and four day rides up to the Blue Ridge Mountains, sometimes to the Shenandoah National Park, sometimes just to the Blue Ridge Parkway. Last fall, we completed a 10 day trip by traveling the entire length of the 480 mile Blue Ridge Parkway, starting in Cherokee, North Carolina and ending at Afton Mountain in Virginia. So when planning a trip, you want to determine some basic factors to so you could get the most satisfaction and enjoyment out of your trip and get some mileage out of your belt at the same time. For us, that means between 200 and 250 miles a day. Typically, we'll start between eight and nine in the morning and finish by three or four in the afternoon. That way we can get into our accommodations, get settled down, change clothes, get a shower, uh, download the day's video, start charging all the batteries and start planning the next day. I've also found that a comfortable pace for us for long distance travel is to ride for three days and take one day as a non-ride day and then repeat. That gives me time to uh, catch up on laundry, uh, crunching some videos, and doing some sightseeing through the area. Now, how much time do we spend in the saddle before we stop and take a break? Well, we're older. I'm 64. I'm not going to disclose Miriam's age because I want to live this to be 65. We will ride between an hour, an hour and a half before it's time for a pit stop just to get off, stretch our legs, get a cold drink and get back on and keep riding. We're not in a hurry. We're out to enjoy the ride. Whenever possible, we also like to take the scenic routes. Now, scenic routes are tricky to find if you don't know where to look for them. Uh, you're not going to find them on Google Maps or I can't find them on any other uh, search engine on the internet. What I have found is paper maps. The old fashioned paper maps will denote uh, a scenic route by little dots along the route. Our nation is full of scenic highways and scenic byways. And those are the routes we prefer to take whenever possible. Typically each day we will start to plan the next day's ride, sort of select the routes and also look at accommodations along the way and make our reservations. Generally, we, even though we try to freestyle as much of a trip as possible, we do like to make the reservations at least before we leave our current accommodations for that night's accommodation. So we know we're not going to be sleeping in a Walmart parking lot back behind the dumpster. So that's sort of important for us. So that's one of the things that we regularly do. Now, typically when it comes to meals, we do sort of improvise along the way. We'll try to not eat three meals a day at set down restaurants because A, that'll just overload your system and it can be pricey. So we'll improvise. We've got a video on how we actually prepare our meals and food preparation for travel. And I'll put that link up here. I also use a checklist. Uh, I use a checklist to prepare for the trip to make sure the spider's ready to go, make sure I've prepared all the equipment, make sure all the proper equipment is loaded and the house is ready for a long distance trip. Then I actually use a checklist for the trip. Uh, I use a start day checklist, an end of day checklist, and a checklist of things to do during that day, especially since we're shooting video. We have uh, objectives. We want to make sure we capture good quality video and so I have a checklist to make sure we've shot enough segments for that. And that's just the pilot in me coming out again because as an aviator, you don't even walk up to an airplane without a checklist in your hand. It's just an old habit. When it comes to packing equipment, we already talked about, we like to plan for riding three, 
and non-ride one day as a average. Sometimes we'll deviate from that a little bit. So with that in mind, I will typically only plan for a four day trip, no matter how long we're gonna be gone, because somewhere in that four days, I'm gonna do laundry. And that way you can stay on a trip as long as you want, as long as your money doesn't run out. And our clothing will basically consist of the clothing we're gonna wear with our riding gear, and then our clothes we're gonna change into when we're non-riding, typically some long pants if the climate is supporting that, some shorts, a t-shirt. Uh, if it's colder weather, we'll always pack a base layer. I always travel with a base layer and a jacket and rain gear because if you don't have it, you're gonna need it and wish you brought it. We also include in our gear list our, cool, our evaporative cooling vest. If you haven't tried those yet and you ride in warm climates, they're worth their weight in gold. Did a video on that, got that in the remarks. I'll try to put that up here too. Um, we use the Fly brand. It's relatively inexpensive. You still get water. As the water evaporates, it cools you. It's phenomenal. It's a game changer. Also in our gear, I take a lot of electronics, as you can imagine, for shooting video, editing video, charging batteries. So we have a lot of extra gear that we use just for that. So that takes a little bit of extra planning. Now, we intentionally did not cover all the gear and equipment we take with us because, frankly, that is a constantly evolving list. It changes, it seems like, for every trip. Plus, your needs and requirements will vary. The basic categories may be the same, but that's about it. We're also aware that our mileage that we do per day, maybe to those of you who travel 600 miles per day on a motorcycle, we seem like lightweights, and we're okay with that because that's the flow that we want to shoot for. But we do hope this video has inspired you to get out and do some traveling on your own because unless you've done it, it doesn't really count. And there are methods and ways to travel for all budget types out there. Because I'm very fond of saying it doesn't make any difference which magic carpet you have as long as you have a carpet that gives you the magic. So get out and enjoy life and explore the world. Thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please press the subscription button below. We do appreciate it, and we'll see you guys next week. Y'all take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. A laser straight road that just reaches to the horizon. Unbelievable. This is the stuff fantasies are made of, especially my fantasies. Oh, my heart beats still.